British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been admitted to hospital and the Queen called on the nation to unite to defeat the coronavirus. But sunny weather on Sunday saw people across the nation bristle under social distancing rules aimed to stop the spread of the virus. Johnson has been in self-isolation for about 10 days after he tested positive. Downing Street says the admission is a precautionary measure and not an emergency. The Prime Minister's hospital admission comes as Britain faces one of its biggest challenges in decades. After testing positive for COVID-19, Boris Johnson had been expected to emerge from seven days of self-isolation. Instead, on Friday, he posted this message on social media. Uh, although I'm feeling better and I've done my, my seven days of isolation, alas, I still have uh, one of the symptoms, a minor symptom of, I, have a, I still have a temperature. And so in accordance with government advice, I must continue uh, my self-isolation until uh, that symptom itself goes. Downing Street says the Prime Minister is still leading the government, but Foreign Minister Dominic Raab could take charge should he become too ill to work. Senior advisers and the government's chief medical officer have also shown symptoms of the virus and been forced to self-isolate. Shortly before the news broke about the Prime Minister's health, Britain's Queen Elizabeth gave an extremely rare televised address to rally the British public. I also want to thank those of you who are staying at home, thereby helping to protect the vulnerable and sparing many families the pain already felt by those who have lost loved ones. The public have been ordered to stay at home, but warm and sunny weather drew people to city parks at the weekend, alarming the authorities. And the health minister, who only a few days ago returned to work after also falling ill, warned that tough action would be taken if people fail to observe social distancing rules. If you don't want us to have to take the step to ban exercise of all forms outside of your own home, then you've got to follow the rules. With the number of infections rising, this London Convention Centre has been converted into a makeshift field hospital. The death toll now stands at nearly 5,000, with officials saying that the peak might be another week away. DW correspondent Bigot Maas is monitoring developments in London. Bigot, good morning to you. What is the latest on the condition of Boris Johnson? Well, no update as of uh, this morning in, in London, Beerish. We know that uh, Downing Street is maintaining it's a precaution. But of course, we also know that uh, it's far from a normal procedure for anyone to be admitted to hospital uh, with uh, COVID-19, with the virus. And there has been a lot of, there have been a lot of rumours um, that actually the, the Prime Minister might be more ill than he or that uh, his spokespeople have admitted. They were always saying that he has mild symptoms, but whenever he did address the nation on video, he really uh, looked and sounded quite rough. So a lot of speculation as to condition of the Prime Minister and, and uh, that is continuing this morning, of course. Bigot, what does that say about the health of his government's uh, response to the coronavirus outbreak? I mean, how sound has it been and are people confident that the government is doing what it can? Well, uh, Downing Street is saying that uh, Boris Johnson at the moment is still leading the government. However, we have seen, especially in the last week, and even with those newspapers who have so far been very loyal uh, with the Conservative Party government, we have seen a lot of criticism of the British government's response to the virus, um, that they have started too late, that they have, for example, put Brexit before breathing. Um, that was one criticism that the government hasn't con participated in the EU scheme to purchase more ventilators. And we've heard from doctors on the front line that they feel that they are not really protected enough. There's not enough protective equipment. There's not enough tests to test patients and to also to test frontline staff in the hospital. So yes, um, it has been not an easy week uh, for the government when it came to their response to the crisis. And of course, in the middle of all this criticism, they get uh, an incredibly rare address to the nation by Queen Elizabeth. How significant is that? 
really fairly uh, significant because she doesn't address the nation very often and uh, she has been appealing to people's better nature and I think this was also planned um, because it was known that the weekend was going to be sunny and that people um, will be trying to in, in a way maybe bend the rules a little bit it will be very difficult for people to adhere to to the government um, advice or, or for, to the regulation actually even to to stay inside and and not to go outside not to gather not to congregate and she she really um yeah was talking to people as in you really have to look at this time and we have to see this time bringing out the best in people and evoking the spirit right. of of world war ii even so definitely a significant moment bigot mass in london thank you very much for that there's been a surge in coronavirus cases in Japan, with over 1,000 infections in Tokyo alone. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has so far resisted calls to declare a state of emergency. But Japanese media are now reporting that he is preparing to do so imminently. Local authorities are already urging residents to stay at home. Tokyo's normally bustling streets are deserted. Starting this past weekend, people are supposed to stay at home. The government is urging citizens only to head out when absolutely necessary. What does necessary mean? What is important? There's a lot of room for interpretation. If we can't go out, we can't get food supplies. People are panic buying already. Japan's first confirmed coronavirus case was in mid-January. At first, there was only a few cases, but the number of new infections has risen exponentially in the last two weeks. There's been heated discussions about how tough the government action should be. We haven't reached the point where we need to declare a state of emergency. We can still avoid that. But the situation remains critical. Unlike Germany, which has tested half a million people a week for the virus, Japan has only tested around half a million in total. Many doctors say that's not enough. I think um, they should uh, broaden the uh, PCR testing for people with mild symptoms because uh, we have a uh, very small PCR testing so we don't know the spread of the disease. Another big concern is the impact on business activity. Japan, the world's third biggest economy, is already on the brink of a recession. Here are some of the other coronavirus headlines making news at this hour. Brett Crozier, the captain fired after criticizing the US Navy's response to the pandemic, has reportedly tested positive for the coronavirus. Crozier was relieved of his position after widely publicized pleas for help for the crew of his aircraft carrier. Over 150 of them have tested positive for the virus. A tiger at the Bronx Zoo in New York City has tested positive for the coronavirus. It's the first known case of COVID-19 in an animal in the United States or in a tiger anywhere. The four-year-old female Malayan tiger had developed a dry cough but is expected to recover. Millions of Indians have switched off their lights and lit candles in a show of solidarity in the fight against the coronavirus. Families confined to their homes by a nationwide lockdown gathered at their doors and windows. India has seen a rise in COVID-19 cases in recent days to more than 3,500. Scotland's chief medical officer has resigned after she was caught visiting her holiday home against her own advice and the UK's coronavirus lockdown laws. Catherine Calderwood was cautioned by police for taking two weekend trips. UK citizens have been warned not to travel to holiday destinations to avoid spreading the virus. Apple has revealed it's been making protective equipment for health workers dealing with the coronavirus outbreak. CEO Tim Cook posted a video on Twitter during which he showed the flat-packed face shields that the tech company has begun producing. He said the first batch was sent to a hospital in Santa Clara last week. Apple is hoping to have shipped over a million of them by the end of this week and a further million every week after that. Here in Germany, the western border city of Heinsberg was one of the first to be hit by the coronavirus, and it was hit hard. Popular carnival celebrations are believed to have kicked off the spread. 
The latest figures show Heinsberg has racked up 1,400 confirmed cases and nearly 40 deaths. Healthcare workers are struggling to keep up with the physical and emotional toll of fighting off the virus. A protective mask is absolutely vital here. Intensive care nurse Alexandra Webb and her team are also required to wear gloves and a protective overcoat when they treat COVID-19 patients. One of the patients in the isolation unit is severely ill. He's been given artificial respiration. The healthcare workers turned him onto his belly so that air flows better into his lungs. A coronavirus infection can lead to a fight for survival. Eigentlich ist das bei einem Intensivpatienten. With intensive care patients, you're supposed to be ready for an emergency 24-7, on the alert around the clock. I believe that the disease is simply unpredictable. She hears the constant beeping sound throughout her working day. Right now, there are six coronavirus patients in the intensive care unit. The nurses here are working up to 20 hours of overtime every week. But despite all efforts, they sometimes lose patience. And this can be tough. We feel powerless. We stand there and don't know how to treat them. There haven't been any proper studies. This is something totally new. We do our best, but sometimes it's not enough. Alexandra Webb and her colleagues have put together an emergency plan in case there are more patients. She knows her team must persevere. People need them like never before. People in another city, Wuhan in China, are slowly emerging from their homes after months in lockdown. The city of 11 million was the original epicenter of the pandemic. Authorities are now slowly easing tight restrictions that were put in place in January. Life inside Wuhan. It's still a place of fear and fascination as the city begins to move on from the crisis. They say there are many infected people without symptoms, so I'll wait until none of those people are out there before I feel safe. I'm worried even if there's only one case a day. I think people will have a psychological fear of the epidemic. It all depends on how individuals think. I come out here every day and I'm not so scared, but I have to take all the precautions in the right way. It's only the barricades that hint at anything other than business as usual at this market. Erected at the beginning of the outbreak, they're slowly being taken down as their purpose becomes moot. Wuhan's 11 million residents are slowly emerging from their homes. Eating and sleeping, sleeping and eating. I think it's really relaxing. I've worked for more than 20 years and have never experienced something like this before. This couple takes advantage of the sunshine after two months inside. When I had been confined for a long time, I sometimes felt depressed. But when I thought about it and calmed down, I felt so fortunate that I hadn't caught the coronavirus. Being healthy is better than everything. The fear of being infected has not gone away, as restrictions on residents are eased. As residents return to their lives, Will it be the Wuhan they remember?